All right. Well, hey, everybody. My name is Sierra Rogers, and I'm a senior product manager here at SIN7. One of my favorite things to do is to talk about uh, how customers are using SIN7 in their day-to-day -day processes. So their workflows and on their shop floor and their warehouses, etc. And whenever I'm having these conversations with customers, something that comes up from time to time is a question about how we calculate cost of goods sold or COGS in SIN7 Core. Now, while I understand the basics of a couple of accounting uh, ideas and concepts, whenever people ask for more in-depth uh, answers, I have to bring in an expert. So today I've got Jason with me to help answer some questions. So Jason, care to introduce yourself? Hi, Sierra. Yes, thank you. Uh, so I'm Jason Naidu. I'm the group product manager here at SIN7, responsible for accounting and integrations. I have worked as an accountant in my previous career. I've worked in a number of industries and worked with inventory costing and COGS on a daily basis. So, yeah, let me help you answer those questions. Oh, perfect. So so let's start with the basics, right? So textbook definition style. Cost of goods sold is the... Um, for an accounting period is the beginning inventory. So what I start out with, plus any purchases I make from my suppliers or vendors during that same uh, accounting period, and then minus the inventory that I'm left with. Um, now the equation makes sense in like textbook terms, but can you walk us through that a little bit better? Yes, thanks, Sarah. Um, So that's traditionally what uh, businesses do for a reporting period when they want to understand their COGS for the reporting period. They need to do a stock count at the end of the period and get that inventory value at the end. And then they can calculate the COGS for that reporting period. It's done as a total and it's what we call the periodic method. So modern product sellers now want to understand their COGS on a product level. And and they want to understand it as the transactions are happening, not at the end of a period when they have to wait for some manual process to happen. This is what we call the perpetual method. Think of it as something in constant motion. The calculations are being done continuously as transactions happen. And the benefit to the product sellers is that they can look at their margins, adjust it on the fly if they need to, and they don't need to wait for period ends to get information. Okay, so I'm going to do something I do quite often when I'm learning something is I'm going to say some of it back to you to make sure I understand it properly. So COGS, cost of goods sold, is the cost of the inventory that's sold during that accounting period. And you said it's typically like a month, right? But the periodic method that you mentioned, it's every period, it happens every so often. This is a, an older, more traditional um, approach to calculating COGS, but it sounds like it requires a lot of work because it, it waits for the team to go through and do inventory counts or stock take or, or what have you. Um, and that, that takes both human resources and a lot of time. Um, but then, We've got the perpetual method, which, like you said, is that ongoing method um, that's that uh, that more modern product sellers are leaning towards. But how do we track the cost of goods sold as products are moving around, maybe from warehouse to a shop floor to a retail? How do we calculate that? How do we capture that? Um, I imagine, especially for folks using spreadsheets or pen and paper, that is a nightmare. Yes, good question, Sierra. Yes, if you're doing manual processes, as you can imagine, it's very labor intensive and can be quite a nightmare. So modern product sellers will use a modern system that provides all the tools and features for them to be able to track their inventory as it moves around those locations, as you mentioned, but also the cost of that inventory as it moves around in those locations. Some businesses might add additional cost to that inventory for moving it from one location to the other. So since 7 Core starts 
recording the actual cost of inventory as it enters the system and all the way through all those different movements and up until it's being sold, which equals the COGS. It's just that simple. <laughs> now, you say simple, but I talk to customers, and I know you do too, that have very different uh, business structures um, in different industries, and they have different workflows. So uh, there's one customer I talk to quite frequently, and they're a dairy farm that makes ice cream. There is a distillery that does whiskey and bourbon and gin. Um, there's one company that does uh, socks with like really funny phrases or, or witty phrases on them. Um, but then we've got another uh, company that does luxury beach umbrellas, like very fancy manufactured beach umbrellas and uh, cosmetic manufacturers. I'm seeing more of these um, with like lipsticks or foundations. So they've got different chemical makeups. Some of them work with contract manufacturers to do either part of the process or full outsourced production with a, a full contract manufacturing, which I know that can impact costing as well. Um, I think of the umbrella company and I think about seasonality, right? So there's the beach umbrellas are probably really popular and very valuable in the summer, but in the winter, they, they start to dip a little bit. They go on sale. Um, and yes. then... Whoa, whoa, Sierra, slow down. All of those are good examples of variables on different workflows that businesses need to cater for because it's unique to their business and their products. Since 7 Core can account for these variables and these movements of these products as it moves through the different workflows, and, and since Seven Core tracks the actual cost of those products as it moves through those different workflows, and if costs are added in the different stages as well. So each customer can tailor their workflows specific to their needs, and since Seven Core tracks all the, these products according to its own costing method as it moves through these workflows. So we handle all of that. Okay, so I love hearing that we can customize things, we can tailor things around a business's workflow. Um, but what do you mean by own costing method? Is that different than the perpetual method uh, that we talked about earlier? Ah, great question, Sierra. You are keeping me on my toes. So when I say own costing method, what I'm referring to is how the individual product is costed for its individual units. So each product will have its cost per unit calculated, which ultimately results in the COGS value when it's sold. And that cost per unit can change depending on the workflow process that that product needs to move through. If there's additions to the product, for example, packaging, and you want to include that cost, et cetera. So generally there are um, accepted methods of how the costing is done. The common ones is first in, first out, so FIFO, and the next one is first expired, first out, or FIFO. So these are generally accepted methods that businesses will use to calculate the cost per unit and ultimately the COGS that, uh, that when that product is sold. There are other methods out there which um, businesses can use as well according to their niche requirements. So so that makes so much more sense now that there's the, the modern product sellers, they don't necessarily want to wait around for an inventory count or a stock take, some manual process um, to get a, an idea of their COGS. They want to do this more perpetual approach where they're constantly in the know about their COGS, um, regardless of what workflow uh, or, or different stage their products are in. Because like you said, we track it wherever it goes. Um, so that makes sense. So thank you so much for helping us understand a bit more about how COGS are calculated in SIN 7. Thanks, Sierra. It's great to help out. <laughs> All right. So if uh, you're watching this and you're thinking, you know, I could use some help with my connected inventory performance with uh, things like accurate costing or inventory management. Maybe it's your e-commerce sales or your manufacturing and production processes, uh, capacity planning, um, forecasting, 
any of these kinds of topics, Sin7 is here to help. So feel free to go to our website where you can check out either a free trial or request a demo where you can learn a little bit more about Sin7 and how we can help you with your business. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.